What's going on everybody? In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you one of the primary option Greeks. And in today's video, that means we're focusing on theta. So the option Greeks help us understand how our option positions are expected to perform based on various changes in environmental factors, such as changes in the stock price, the passage of time, or changes in implied volatility. In today's video, I'll be focusing on theta, and theta is the option Greek that helps us estimate how much our options are going to decrease in extrinsic value with each passing day. So options are a decaying asset, which means as time passes and as their expiration dates approach, they lose their extrinsic value slowly but surely, and theta is the option Greek that helps us understand how much our options are expected to lose their extrinsic value on each day. Now it helps to understand intrinsic and extrinsic value, so I'll link some videos in the description below if you need to learn more about intrinsic and extrinsic value, as well as other videos related to this topic today. All option prices have two price components, one being intrinsic value and the other being extrinsic value, which is sometimes referred to as time value. Now one fact we know about options is that as time passes, an option will lose its extrinsic value until it reaches its expiration date, at which point the option will have no more extrinsic value remaining. So theta is the option Greek that helps us understand how much extrinsic value our options are expected to lose with each passing day. All options that you look at on an option chain will have negative theta because all options lose their extrinsic value as time passes and as they approach their respective expiration dates. So when you look at an options theta, it will always be negative when you are looking at it on the option chain, which I'll show you how to do in just a minute. As an example of what an options theta represents, let's say we have a $10 option and the options theta is stated to be negative 0.25. What this means is that with the passage of one day, this option is expected to lose 25 cents of value, and more specifically, 25 cents of extrinsic value because intrinsic value does not decay, only extrinsic value decays as time passes. So basically, all else being held equal, if one day passes, this $10 option is expected to be worth 25 cents less, or $9.75, after the passing of one day, and that is assuming that there is no change in the stock price and implied volatility also remains the same, and the only thing that is changing is the passage of one day. But why do option prices decay and decrease over time? Well, as I've mentioned numerous times in this video already, an option's extrinsic value is the only price component that decreases and decays away as time passes. Now, extrinsic value is sometimes referred to as time value, and that's because if you look at options with more and more time until expiration, those options will be trading with more and more extrinsic value or time value. Extrinsic value or time value can be interpreted as the portion of the options price that is associated with the options potential to become more valuable, specifically intrinsically valuable, before that option expires. So if you look at an option with 30 minutes to expiration, that option is going to be trading with very little extrinsic value, almost no extrinsic value, because stock prices themselves do not change much over typical 30 minute periods. And because of that, in 30 minutes, the option is very likely to be worth exactly what it's worth now because stock prices do not change much in 30 minutes. And therefore that option is not going to be trading with a lot of extrinsic value because with 30 minutes left until expiration, there is not much time left for the option to become more valuable through significant changes in the stock price. However, if you look at an option with 365 days to expiration, this option is going to be trading with a significant amount of extrinsic value or time value because with 365 days left before this option expires, there are 365 days left for the stock price to move in favor of that option. Because of that, there is a chance that this option becomes significantly more valuable because stock prices can tend to move significant amounts in a year's time. But as time passes and as the option approaches its expiration date, the value of that option at expiration becomes more and more certain. For example, if we're looking at a call option with $10 of intrinsic value, meaning the stock price is $10 above the call option strike price, and this call option expires in 30 minutes, well, it's very likely that in 30 minutes, this call option is going to be worth somewhere around $10, because as I've mentioned before, in a typical 30 minute window, stock prices do not change significantly. And 
Because of that, in 30 minutes, this call option with $10 of intrinsic value is going to be somewhere around $10 in value because over a typical 30 minute period, stock prices do not change much, which means we can expect that this option is going to be worth somewhere around $10 when it expires in 30 minutes. However, if you look at that same option that has $10 of intrinsic value, but a year until expiration, this option is going to be worth significantly more than $10 because it has the $10 of intrinsic value, but it also has a year before it expires, which means there's the potential for the stock price to increase significantly, and maybe that $10 option goes to a value of $30, and because of that, this option is going to be trading with a lot of extrinsic value. As time passes and as the option approaches its expiration date, the extrinsic value will slowly approach zero, and theta is the option Greek that helps us understand how much the option is expected to lose with the passing of one day. Let's go ahead and look at some examples so you can see exactly how time decay or extrinsic value decay actually works in practice. And to do this, we're gonna look at numerous trade examples from history so that you can see exactly how this concept plays out in the real world. In this example, we're looking at a call option with a strike price of $105. On the bottom portion of the chart, we are looking at the price of the call option as time passes. As we can see here, Apple never gets above $105, which means this call option's price is 100% extrinsic, and as I've mentioned before, extrinsic value decays away as time passes. The value of the call option changes over the course of the period because Apple's stock price fluctuates, getting closer to and further away from the call strike price at various points in this trade. However, we can see that as expiration gets closer, the options value, which is 100% extrinsic, eventually gets to $0. As time passed and as Apple remained below the strike price of $105, even moving further away from it, it became less probabilistic that the option would become intrinsically valuable before expiration, and that is why we saw a steady decrease in the options price, and at the very end of this trade, we saw a dramatic decrease in the option price because as expiration approached, and with Apple well below the strike price of $105, the probability that this option expired worthless increased dramatically. And at the very end of the period, we can see that all of the extrinsic value came out of the option over time, and with the option having no intrinsic value, the option expired worthless. In this next example, we are looking at a call option on Netflix with a strike price of $90. As we can see, Netflix was above the call's strike price the entire time, which means the call always had intrinsic value. As I mentioned earlier, only an option's extrinsic or time value melts away as time passes, and on the bottom of the chart, we can see that the option's total price in relation to its intrinsic value, with the shaded region in between the actual price and the intrinsic value, representing the option's extrinsic value. We can see that over time and as the option approached its expiration date, the difference between the intrinsic value and the total price of the option converged, which means the option's price lost the extrinsic value over time, bringing the intrinsic value and the total option price closer to the same value as expiration got closer and closer. In this next example, we are looking at a straddle on Facebook with a strike price of $105. And as we can see, Facebook hovered around the 105 price level the entire time, and we can see how the extrinsic value in the straddle gradually melted away as time passed. I did not plot this trade all the way to expiration, so there's still extrinsic value at the end of the period, but we can clearly see how an option position's extrinsic value will melt away as time passes if the stock price does not change significantly. This is perhaps the best example of time decay or extrinsic value decay in action because the stock price remained right around the straddle strike price virtually the entire period and we see a very gradual decrease in the value of those options as time passed. Hopefully these examples helped you understand exactly why and how option prices decrease over time and as they approach their respective expiration dates. But now that we know why and how options decay, what options are expected to lose the most extrinsic value as time passes? And in other words, which options have the highest levels of negative theta? In general, the options with the most extrinsic value in their prices will have the most significant negative theta values, and that's because they have the most extrinsic value to lose before they expire, compared to a different option with less extrinsic value, but the same amount of time until expiration. 
So if one option has $1 of extrinsic value and 30 days to expiration, while another option has $10 of extrinsic value and 30 days to expiration, obviously the $10 option has $10 of extrinsic value to lose in 30 days, while the $1 option has $1 of extrinsic value to lose over 30 days. So if we use very simple math, we can calculate that the $10 option is expected to decay in value much faster than the $1 option because it has more extrinsic value, but the same amount of time until expiration. The options with the most extrinsic value are going to be the ones that are at the money, meaning their strike prices are near the stock price and they have lots of time until expiration as they will have more extrinsic value or time value since there is more time for the stock price to move and therefore there's more time for those options to become significantly more valuable. But not all options are observed to decay at the same velocity. It has been said before that at the money options actually decay faster and faster in the final weeks before they expire. A few years ago, I ran a study to test this assertion of at the money options decaying faster and faster as they approach their expiration dates. And the way I did this was I looked at the at the money straddle price on SPY, which is the S&P 500 ETF, and I started with 90 days till expiration, and then I recorded the at the money straddle price every single trading day until that expiration reached zero days to expiration, and in other words, until those options expired. Then I grouped all of the straddles that I recorded by the number of days they had left until expiration, and I calculated the remaining straddle price relative to the very first recorded date where I recorded their prices, and I plotted the percentage of the remaining price over time until all of those straddles reached expiration. In this chart, we have the percentage of remaining extrinsic value on the y-axis and the days to expiration on the x-axis. As we can see, from 90 days to expiration to 60 days to expiration, the at-the-money straddles were worth about 80% of the 90-day straddle value or starting value on average. At 30 days to expiration, the at-the-money straddles still held on to about 60% of their starting 90-day values on average. Of course, in the final 30 days, the straddles lost all of their extrinsic value because all options must lose all of their extrinsic value by the time they reach expiration. We can see the decay rate accelerate as the expiration date approaches. This is not a perfect study, but it does show how at the money options hold on to a lot of extrinsic value until the final weeks before expiration. This does not mean they do not decay when they have more time until expiration, just that the decay gets faster and faster as the final days before expiration pass. The exact theta number of an option is not the final stop on our discussion of theta because what's more important is understanding your position theta. Position theta is actually just theta, but it is converted into a dollar amount. And what position theta tells you is how much money you are expected to make or lose based on the passage of one day with all else being held equal. So basically, if you look at your position tab on your trading platform, you will see a position theta number. And this number is going to be a little bit larger than the option theta you see on the option chain. So what I mean by that is if you sell a call option and the theta on the option chain says negative 0.25, on your actual position theta, the theta will show up as positive 25 because if your option decreases by 25 cents and you are short that option, that means you are going to experience a profit of $25 because that 25 cent decrease in the option multiplied by the 100 option contract multiplier gives you a profit of $25 for every call option that you sold and saw a decrease by 25 cents. If you buy an option, your position theta is going to be negative, which is telling you that as time passes, you are expected to lose a certain amount of money with each passing day. And if you sell options, your position theta is going to be positive, meaning that with each passing day, you are expected to make money because as your option position decreases in value, as someone who sold the option initially, you want the option price to decrease and position theta being positive tells you that with each passing day, you are expected to profit with all else being held equal. All else being held equal meaning no change in the stock price and no change in implied volatility. On the Tastyworks trading platform, you can see this on the open positions tab, which is where your open option positions and stock positions will show up. As we can see here, I have an open option position in SPX, and the position theta says positive 55.738. 
The positive position theta is telling me that my position is expected to profit from the passage of time with all else being held equal. More specifically, if the stock price and implied volatility remain the same, I'm expected to make about $56 from the passage of one day. This position theta number will change as time passes, as the stock price changes, and as implied volatility changes, so it is not a linear estimation. But in this specific situation, the current expected profit from one day of extrinsic value decay in my option position is $55.74, which is obviously a very good thing for me because if the stock price does not move and implied volatility remains the same, my position is expected to profit so long as the stock price does not move significantly, implied volatility does not increase significantly, and time simply passes. But with this in mind, you should not go out there and sell options with the intention of increasing your position theta number because you have to keep in mind that a directional movement in the stock price against your position can easily overwhelm any profits that you would have had from the passage of time. So when you're trading options, you always have to keep in mind that more often than not, you are making a directional bet and even if your position doesn't really have any directional exposure or delta exposure at the start, it can become very directional very quickly if the stock price moves against your position. So when you're trading options, you can't just look at the position theta number and try to jack it up as high as possible because that's more than likely not going to be a winning strategy in the long term. You have to keep everything in mind when you're trading options. If you have any questions or comments on this video, please leave a comment down below as I would love to hear from you. And I do more often than not respond to almost every comment on my channel. I'm Chris from Project Option and I will see you in the next video.